You'll never, ever, ever walk into destiny without being at least three things. And one of them is a man of conviction. Or it doesn't matter whether it's in my faith, my family, my finances, my fitness. I choose to go the right way. But we got a God that'll turn it around, that'll cover you, that'll heal you, that'll lift you, that'll strengthen you. Can you think back on some stuff that he brought you through? If he did it before, he'll do it again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, my God. I'm going to tell you all, I am so nervous. And um, it's not because I don't know God. I, 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 I called North Carolina this morning to give me a little a boost. And um, I was told that because I'm nervous, that means I'm in the right place. Yeah. You, you shouldn't get so confident that you know what he, his word needs to say to you and, and, to, the, and to the people of God. So, I, look, I just want to thank Pastor, the shepherd of this house, yeah. my covering. Yeah. I mean, he has given me an opportunity to have a, a voice of, at his pulpit, and we know that his pulpit is anointed, yeah. and I don't take that for granted. Yeah. Um, my covering, you know, my stand. Her new executive pastor, Pastor Anderson. Um, I'll say to you publicly, um, my sister died when I was very young. And you have stood with me. And for that, I, I thank you for everything that you've deposited to you all, my good success family. Oh, my God. You all have loved me. Open your heart. Open your arms. And I have needed that in ways that I couldn't tell you. I mean, Elder Joe, thank you for inviting me to this place to feel the love. Don't ever underestimate what you do, what you say. Words have life. And you have allowed me to be rejuvenated in that. I mean, this is a quiet crowd. We are not a quiet church. Does anybody know how faithful God is on today? Right, God is faithful. God is faithful in the good times, in the bad times, in the rough times. You know, when the money is short and the bills are due, when the kids won't listen, you know, when the husband or the wife won't cook, won't clean, you know, when you can't find peace in your home, at your job, know where God is faithful. He's faithful. And, and, and I know that he is faithful, have been faithful, will always be faithful because of what he's done for me. And this is personal. This is for me. Yeah. Like, like he decided that I wasn't an accident. You know, Psalms 139 said he knew me even before. Like, imagine somebody loving you so much he thought about you before you were you. Like, before, <laughs> before you had a kick, before you were you, he was like there saying, how are you? I love you. It's time. And so I, I, I try to tell people when you're struggling, and, and, and you just don't know, and, and, and you had things in life happen, just know that God chose you. Because he wants, no, you're not there because he wants you to be there. You chose to be there. He just got a way of escape because he loves you so much. He just got a way of escape. But know that the devourer, the enemy, wants to kill, steal, and destroy. And if you don't think the enemy is bothering you, maybe you are the enemy. I mean, so, 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 Psalms 23 and 5 says that I will sit at a table. He'll prepare in the presence of my enemy. Now, if you're at a table and you have no adversary, you might want to look in the mirror. Because it's either you're the adversary or you've been attacked by the adversary. Oh, life is good. Nothing is happening. Well, I guess not. You're already on his side. He don't have to look for a teammate he already got. That's what I'm saying. No, 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 no. I, I, I want to give you a little backdrop. But so, so, so we, we enter the book of Luke. And, it, and in chapter 1, you know, it, it, it's foretelling what's happening in the day. It's really telling, it's foretelling the birth of Jesus. That's very important for our text. Because Mary, if you, if you go down in verse 34 in chapter 1, Mary asked a question to the angel. Now, 
the thing that got puzzled me, she wasn't surprised that the angel was speaking to her. Now, I don't know about you, but if, if I wake up and an angel, you know, when, when you pick me up, you know what I'm saying? Well, I'm just saying, if an angel is there, but she wasn't surprised about the angel. Now, just was a teenager. She said she was like the, the text. We can't, the, 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 uh, so, uh, Revelations 29, 18, and 19 said we can't add or take away. So it don't say, so we don't know. But she won't surprise. Now, I believe everything that the word of God says. I'm not one of them people that need to change it. You don't need to be supported. I need to believe every comma, every period. I believe all of that. So if you don't believe that, you you know, you, you can have some debate outside and you can box with God. I know you're going to lose already, but I'm just going to tell you right now, you might not want to be tired. But but she said, she, she asked a question. She said, how can this be? How am I going? I, 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 I've not been with a man. I'm a virgin. And, 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 and the Holy Spirit goes and tells her, you know, the, how, what's going to happen. But then in, in, in verse 36, it says something that we forget. The angel tells her, with God, nothing is impossible. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did you get that? We serve a God that makes the impossible possible. I mean, I, no, 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 no. See, see you really missed a, a shouting moment. I'm talking about, do you remember the impossible moments in your life? Like, like, like the, 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 the moments when, now, now if, you, if you've got a conversion experience, you know it won't cause just mama pray or daddy pray. You know you had to pray. You know it had to be something that you said, now, my God, my God. Well, you, it, 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 look, even Farrakhan, he was saying all praises be to Allah until cancer. And then, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee. I don't care what you say is going to happen. He is going to make it plain. So, so uh, who, who do you know can tell the sun where to stand at in the morning? Who, who do you know to tell the ocean, you just stop right there? Who, who do you know to tell the moon, I know you're there, but I want you to hide until it gets night? Who, who do you know that creation... Talks about all his greatness. Creation. Not, not, not you, you. Creation. The rocks will cry out if you don't. He don't even care. We don't have to. Everything will cry out for him. But we be silent saints. We can't tell the people at our job, oh, I'm a Christian. You will say you're a commander fan loud. But if we talking about the word of God, oh, shh, shh, shh. He loves us so much his love provides. More than we could ask for. The, the word of God says that above and beyond. Whatever. Wait a minute. Above and beyond. That means you ain't conceptualizing. Can you trust God enough to ask him to give you something that you can't even believe in? Give that kind of blessing. Can you ask him for that kind of blessing? Don't ask him for what you I don't want the car you got. It's old. I don't want the house you live in. It's already there. Give me something I ain't seen. Because... Let, it, let even the non-believers say, what kind of God is this? So we get to chapter 2. And then Jesus is born. And we, we understand how he was born. We, we know the story. But don't be go, become so familiar with the scripture that you think you know the scripture. Now, am I with a crowd where we believe that Jesus is love? Yes. We believe that Jesus is the epitome of love? Yes. Well, do you understand when there was no room in the end, what they were really saying is that the end had no room for love. The about the Passover. I'm not going to take for granted that people know what the Passover is because we do things out of ritual, but we don't know what it means. So it's, in, it's found in Exodus 12. You can, you can take that in your Bible study time. It's going to tell you the whole story of Passover because you need to know what you're doing. You, you, you're running to church on Wednesday trying to find somewhere to put ashes on your forehead. You don't know what it means. What? What? I mean, you know, 
know, the, the, you know, I know you got your bumper sticker to say you're a Christian, but if I didn't see the sticker, would I know? Would I know? You know, so 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 we don't want to, we don't want we don't want God to have to pass over. Because it was the death that was passing over. He told him to mark his house with blood. The post. Has God ever told you to show somebody the mark of Jesus in your life? But you couldn't do it. Do you understand what that means? You don't owe me nothing. You don't have laryngitis on me. Don't remember nothing I say. If it's not in the book, it don't mean nothing. So in verse 41, it says, now the parents went to the Jerusalem every year. Now, that means it was a tradition. It was a ritual. They, they, they went every year. You know, it, it was a time when mothers would, would sit us down. You know, my mother, my girl, they sat us down there, and they gave us the best they had. They taught you how to cook, and, and they taught you how to sew, and, and, and the men, the fathers taught their, their sons how to tie the ties and, 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 and keep a job and, 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 and how you treat your parents and, 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 and don't ever hit your sister. It was a time when the entire family, we would sit down for Sunday dinner. You know, we would pray over the food and at night before we went to bed. Right? We, you, you know, everybody would gather together once a year for family reunions. Family reunions was really a time that we all just said, you know, this is what God has given us. We love you. You are a part of the family. But today, cooking has turned to the fast food restaurant. <laughs> We, we have allowed our sons, instead of to be groomed, we let them wear their pants under their behind to show their underwear. And that's if they have on underwear. You know, fa family time has been replaced with Facebook, Insta Instagram, and Twitter. Family reunions have been replaced with social media. A society would rather have likes from perfect strangers than love from family members. Can you tell me where? Where did, where did Jesus go? Where did we leave him at that we say it's okay? It's more important than what the world thinks. I can quote every other book, but I say, give me a scripture. And I've been saved 30 years, and I'm still saying, Jesus wept. <laughs> That's all that's springing up in me. I know he cried. You only know Jesus wept. After all he did for you, you still saying Jesus wept. Can Jesus stop crying? Can you stop him from crying? Can he do something for you? Now, in, in, verse, in, in verse 42, they said that he was 12 years old, and they went to, up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. That meant they had been there 11 other times with Jesus because he was 12. Now, now you have become so familiar. They were going to the place to remember the Passover, to remember God saving their ancestors, but they weren't going for reverence. They was going out of tradition. Yeah. Now, m m my first point is don't get so accustomed with coming to church that you forget the significance of church. Don't, 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 don't get, don't, don't, don't forget it's a big gap between joining church and being a church member. And, and usually the gap is you become a church goer. You, you know, and there's a difference between being a church goer and a church member. Now, I know you were there on Sunday. I know you were, you were there because cause I it wasn't because I saw your tires in the tire box, but it was because I you know saw your car out front because you know you got the new car, but your tires ain't in the tire box, and you showed me the new purse, but your tires ain't in the tire box, and you told me about the trip that you went on, but your tires ain't in the tire box, and if we say offering, you gonna be like, hey, always asking for money. We ain't asking for money. The word of God say ten percent and offering. And if you have a problem with it, ask him about it. Tell him about it. Tell him what your problem is with his direction. Because yeah. the church is not a social club. That's not what it is. But we have reduced it to being sociable. We have told a man of God, you got five minutes <laughs> to put it all together because the game starts. And I can't be late for the game. But I want to leave the house of God and rush right back into that trouble. Now, in, in, as we move on, in, in, in verse 43, it says that when the days were fulfilled, when they were finished, they returned, and they didn't know that Jesus stayed. Now, in, in, in the New Living Translation, and I love this, they said that 
After the celebration was over, they started home, but Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. Don't miss this. And his parents did not miss him at first. They didn't miss him. Now, 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 we got some parents in here, and some of us are grandparents. Can you imagine not missing your child? You done got all the way back home, and you didn't miss your child? And not only that, you didn't miss when you got home. A whole day had passed. Can you imagine what happened when you called 911 <laughs> and you say, I need some help finding my child? And they say, well, when was the last time that you saw him? And they say, oh, well, I, I think it was a day ago. Do you think that a whole day? And now, now imagine if your girlfriend called and said, can you help me look for the baby? And you said, wait, the baby yet? Well, I, I don't know. I, I missed him. He was gone a day or two ago. Somebody's going to think he did something to the baby. Well, they didn't even miss him. They had become so familiar with God that they didn't miss him. They didn't miss him. They, how can you not miss something holy? You, you just, you, you know you didn't have him. You, did you remember just the chapter before? The angel told you what was going to happen. God told you what he was going to do for you. You, 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 your whole life, you ain't got to think for when you look back. You know you ain't stuck. But you don't forget the blessing of yesterday. You don't turn him, you don't turn Jesus into a song like Janet Jackson. What have you done for me lately? <laughs> I just did that yesterday. Well, right now, what have you done? You can't reach out because you don't reach up. There's no way in the world that you can't be grateful for all he's done. Now, my second point is don't be so consumed with the world that you don't miss being with Jesus. How can you be so comfortable in the status quo that you decide you don't need Jesus? D don't be so distracted, so, so caught up in temptation that you forget who he is and what he's done for you. You don't remember that, you, that, that God so loved the world, that God so loved the world that he did what? He gave. He gave, he gave, he gave his only begotten son that what? Whomsoever. And don't think you ain't said it before. Do you remember Abram? He asked Abram to give Isaac after he gave away Ishmael. God is going to require things from you that ain't easy. God going to gonna tell you to let go and don't hold on at the same time. It's not possible. It's not possible. You can't be lukewarm or you'll be screwed out. You don't even know you screwed out. The anointing has left and you still down. And you wonder why he don't bless you. You wondering. You what why are you wondering? Let me finish the text. My time getting short. My time getting short. Go. Verses 44. Verses 44 and 45. But they supposing. Supposing means assuming. To have been in the company. They, now, they just thought he was going to hang around with them. They, don't even, they didn't even recognize that he was the one that was the one, which is why they're there. They assumed he needed them. They forgot they needed him. They, they had it twisted. You think God, God don't need you. God don't need you. You ain't so high and lifted up. He don't need us. Your vessel is not so clean that he needs you. He, he, he can move. I don't care how long you've been. He can move past you and get the new person that just came in. That ain't even been here. That don't know all the scriptures. But they know how to praise God. And you're wondering why you're stuck on the same fruit. You're wondering why your tree ain't burning no fruit. Because you ain't got it watered. You got plenty and say, I'm saved, and I'm just going to wait to go to heaven. You ain't did nothing since. And you said, that ain't me. And then you sit back. And instead of, instead of helping a person, instead of loving a person, you skink your nose up. You tell them what they should be doing. And you ain't even doing what you ought to be doing. Because if we look behind the veil, if we just took a peep, if God were to show your life right now, would you want us to see it? Would it be so unspotted, unwrinkled? You must know. You must know. They went to a journey, and then they found him not. Wait a minute. They found him not. That's my third point. You got to know where to find Jesus at, man. 
You don't know where to find Jesus? Oh, I, I can tell you don't. You think he's in a bottle. I got it. You, you think he's you, you, he a genie? Or, 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 is it a, or is it Jack Daniels? You, 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 you think he's in, in, in pills? I, 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 don't want, I don't want to hurt nobody. You, you, you think he's in sex? I, I know that's a dirty word in church, but you shall be trying to get some when you get outside the door. I'm just saying, you know that's how you got, you know that sex had to occur for you to be here. You know, you know we ain't Jesus. You know none of us, are, we didn't get here through immaculate conception. You know something had to happen. You know something had to happen. If I make my bed in heaven, if I make my bed in hell, he's still there. So don't think you hiding because it's dark. Don't think it's hiding because you in the alley. Don't think because you're driving another car. Don't think he can't see you. He just giving you the opportunity to look at your own self. That's what he wants you to do. I, he, you can't find him at the mall. I don't care what kind of car you buy, what kind of clothes you buy. It still ain't going to fill the void that if you don't have a spiritual father there, it's going to be empty. It's going to be empty. So then you find, so, stop asking God to send you a mate. Oh, I want a man. Oh, I want a woman. You're not ready for real love because you're not ready for real responsibility. You don't even thank God for Jesus. You don't even thank God for Jesus. You don't. Discipleship is a responsibility. You came here. You said, I want to. It's a responsibility. But are you faithful? You know if you are. You know if you are. His word cannot lie. Do you believe that? If, if, if you believe that, then... Why are you praying, Lord, I just don't know what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen. We more than a conqueror. Yeah. Lord, I, 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 I don't know. My, my job, you know, my money's short. What? The earth is his and the fullness thereof. Ask him. Ask God for a withdrawal from his bank. Whatever you need, God, give me a withdrawal. I need it from you. I don't care what man say. You can have a bank account. You can have good health. But if you don't have a mind that stayed on Jesus, what's going to happen? It will fade away. And on the day of judgment, what will happen? You will go to hell. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hell. Oh, you don't know it's a hell? It's a hell. Don't just talk about I want to go to heaven. If you don't lift your eyes up in heaven, you will go to hell. You cannot just stay around here. We ain't Jehovah's Witnesses now. This ain't the paradise that we're looking for. This is not the paradise that we're looking for. You will go to hell. You will go to hell. We need to start telling people you will go to hell. Tell the children the truth. You don't have time. No man know the day or the hour. But you tell somebody, well, you know I'm young. I got stuff to do. Well, you might be young. If you're 20 and you died 80, you got time. But if you're 20 and you died 21, oh, oh time is short. No man, no. Don't count your time. Don't ask God. Don't keep asking him for stuff he already told you how to get. God's instructions are his expectations. You don't know that. God's instructions is his expectations. You will do what he say. Because if you don't, you wonder why your prayers ain't being answered. Do you know how to pray? Are you praying in the right posture? You can't pray with God and be praying on people too. Whoa. Oh, you can't do that now. Jer Jeremiah say, well, I know the thoughts. Do you know the thoughts he got for you? You waiting for somebody else to call you, and he said, I'm standing here waiting. Ain't no call waiting. Ain't nobody in line. But you sitting there waiting. For something earthly, for something natural, to fill your physical flesh, and it don't even belong to you. If he wanted to, he could snatch it up. He could snatch it up anytime he wanted to, when he wanted to, how he wanted to. Now, it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple. Now, the text say they found him. I say he never left. The text never said he left. He was in the same place. They just had to do an all-round detour to come back. And then they were surprised. Now, he won't just in the temple. Don't just be at church being lazy. He won't just at the temple sitting around. He was listening and asking questions. 
He was listening. Now, 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 now that pondered me because, wait a minute, he asking questions, but he know the answer? Because he is the answer? Do you think that, this, that the word of God is here for you to read because he don't know the answer? He wants you to get it. He wants you to open up the book so you can see his answer. He is the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh. Not because somebody brought you. He is the way. Does your light shine so people know that he is the way? Not you. And when you bring him in, do you take ownership for God's work? Are you, are you telling people what you did? Or are you thanking him for what he has already done, what he's going to do? And if he does nothing else, can you still be grateful? When you, pray, when you pray to him for healing and the pain's still there, can you be grateful? When you pray to him and say, can you heal that loved one and they die anyway, can you be grateful? Can you be grateful when your mother and father forsake you? Can you be grateful when you're wrongly accused? Can you be grateful? Can you be grateful when don't nothing look right? When all the bills are there and the pocketbook is empty, can you be grateful? Can you even be grateful when you call out to him and you don't hear him? Can you be grateful? Can you stop? Can you stop begging and say, Lord, what can I do? Can you, can you remember that you were sinking deep in sin? Far. It was far. It was so far. It was the east and the west. Far from the peaceful shore. And what happened? What happened? The master of the sea heard you. Sometimes you got to cry out to God. Sometimes you got to cry out. Don't, don't not want to cry. Weeping. Weeping. Oh, it may endure for a night. Didn't nobody say how long that night was. We got God on our time. God ain't on no stopwatch. He's neither in or out of time. Ecclesiastic said in three that for everything there is a time and a season. Under everything that means good things, bad things, everything has a season. What is your choice going to be? He's asking you today to choose. Choose. Choose who you're going to serve. You ain't got to tell him. We see who you're serving. He sees who you're serving. He, he's not the one that wants lip service. Lip service means nothing to him. We come in here complaining. Oh, it, 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 it's church time. You done asked God for a big list. And the choir come, and you say, oh. The, the man of God preach. And you say, praise the Lord. You, 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 you talk about people, but you won't talk to them. You, 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 you think just because you whisper, nobody can hear you. But did you know God is omnipresent? He's listening to your conversation. He is not pleased. He is writing it down. And if you have not decided... If you have not decided where you're going to lay your head, this is what's going to happen on the day of judgment for people like me that know I was jacked up, still am on some days, tore up from the floor up, but I know how to do one thing. I know how to repent. I know how to turn my plate down. I know how to tell him what I need for him to do for me, which is to always line up to his word. So what happens on the day of judgment if you're saved? Because it's going to be a judgment. The book is going to open up. And they're going to say, well, Dr. P, <laughs> you did A, B, C. Oh, no, they ain't going to say that. They're going to say, you lied. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you ain't, you ain't always treat people right. Right? And, and, and then guess what's going to happen? Jesus is going to stand in between and say, I covered that. That's what's going to Is he going to cover you? Is he going to cover you? Is he going to cover you? Or are you going to wait for a, a, a report from somebody else? What I'm saying today, what I'm saying today is that the time is over for playing church. The church is in you. That means you take the church wherever you go. You take the church wherever you go. If, if, if I were to go to your church right now, if I would go to your church, would God be there? Yes. Or have you become so comfortable in having church that you don't have church? You, I, I, know you had, I know you read the scripture. I know you sang the Psalms. I know you had a, a, had a prayer. But did you have church? Did you invite the Holy Spirit to come in? Today we're going to invite the Holy Spirit to come in. 
And, and, and we're going to invite the Holy Spirit to come in the same way we've always invited him to come in. Is there somebody here today that don't know Jesus? Is there somebody here today that don't know my Lord? I, I will introduce him to you. Is there somebody right here, right now, that has never given your heart to God? That has never even considered what it would be like if it cracked the sky in two minutes? And, 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 and those the first, because the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then those that remain, will you be one of the remaining that will be caught up? Because it's too late then. Will you be caught up? Or will you be let down? Now, if you're let down, the hell I told you about, it will, the, the fire will be hot. It will be gnashing of the teeth. The fire won't consume you. You will always be in turmoil and trouble. Is there anybody here today that has not asked Jesus to come into their life? Now, 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 I'm not, I'm not pastor. I'm not going to beg you. I'm not going to, I'm going to prompt you. I tr look, I just got in. I ain't trying to lose my, my mansion. I'm just, okay. I, look. Look, I'm not trying to lose my mansion. Now, this 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 is nowhere in the scripture. This is this is this is Dr. P's text. The word of God says that we will be promised a mansion in heaven. Ain't that right? Now, it, it also tells us about we can have a crown with many jewels. So I got to thinking, because sometimes I do that, he give me permission. I said, now if I got a crown with many jewels. I'm just thinking that the mansions got to have many levels. I'm not going to be in the basement <laughs> in heaven. I'm not going to be in the basement. I have not been in hell with all y'all people and go to heaven and be in the basement. I'm going to be in the penthouse. I don't care. I don't care who says it. I don't care if it's right. I don't care if they say this ain't the right time. Jesus is always the right time. He's always the right solution. If you're here now and you've never given your life to Christ, now's the time. Can you come? Now is the time. Now, 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 if you, the, the, the second one is if, you, if, if, if you've given your life, but, you know, you've done the thing that we all have done as Christians. We backslide. We, we get so comfortable. On the day of Jesus is telling you, I'm standing here waiting that you moved. You moved. I'm still here. My, my, my hands are out, outstretched just like any father would be for his child. I'm waiting for you to bring you back into reconciliation. I love you so much that I was here today because I knew you would need for me to be here. Even before the foundations of the earth, I knew you would need to be here. So I made this opportunity just for you. I love you so much. That you are the reason that I'm here. Let everything else go out the way. I am here because you need for me to be here. And I love you enough to be here. That's how much he loves you. Is there anybody that needs to recommit your commitment? Do you, do, do you know how much he loves you? Do you know how much he needs you? Do you know? Do you know? Jesus is the only solution for a dying world. The only solution. Now, if you don't know how good he is, if you, if you came here and you couldn't feel like you used to feel, don't ask yourself who moved. Just run to the altar and let him bring you back into right accord and right relationship with him right now. Now, if you're here and there's something on your heart that tells you that I committed, I, I, I'm not really sure if I backslidden, but I just don't, my life just needs to get back in line. My, 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 my thoughts need to get back in line. I, I need to get back on one accord. I, I've strayed. I've been disobedient. I, 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 I just don't, I just don't know. I just don't know how not to do Romans, Romans 8 chapter, 7 chapter, 13 verse says that the thing I hate is the thing I do. I just keep doing the things that I hate, God. I keep bruising you. I keep, I keep hurting you over and over again, not because you don't deserve better, but because I don't know how to give it to you. And I know you love me anyway, God. I know you love me anyway. We want you to come. We want you to come because his way is the way. His way is the only way. 
His way is the only way you can be saved. His way is the only way. Now, I'm going to tell you something. This next plea is for those silent saints. Those ones that know what to say but don't feel like they have the voice to say it. If you want God to turn up the volume of your voice, if you want to be an instrument of power for God, if you want to be able to say, on this day, I say, for God I live and for God I die. For, 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 for God, I am a soldier in his army. I have on my whole armor, and I want it to be righteous in your name. God, I, you are my Jehovah Jireh. You are my Jehovah Rapha. You are my Jehovah Sikhanu. God, I love you. I trust you. I believe in you. On this day, just come and allow God to love you back to life. He will love you back to life. He will, he can, only God can give life because he's the only one that can truly take it. Only God can give it to you. God loves you. He 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 loves you. Hey, this is Dr. Bill Bennett from Good Success Church in Washington, D.C., and I want to thank you for tuning in to our broadcast. We pray that the message has been a blessing to you today. Listen, if you are ever in the D.C., Maryland, or Virginia area, we welcome you to come by and visit with us. I'm sure you'll be inspired by our services, and we're located at 4401 Sheriff Road Northeast in the Deanwood community of Washington, D.C. Listen, if you'd like more information about the church and all of the various things that we're doing, we'd love for you to give us a call at uh, 202-398-3000, or you can certainly tune into our website at goodsuccesschurch.org, goodsuccesschurch.org, or you can certainly connect with us on all the social media platforms, Good Success Church DC, and we'd love to connect with you. Again, thanks for tuning in. God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you next week.